These days, people act unimpressed unless an engine makes four-digit horsepower numbers. But true fans of all-American horsepower should be able to appreciate this build. How about a straight six Jeep engine build that bumps up the horsepower by well over 50% for right around five grand? Not too bad, huh? Keith Newcomer of Newcomer Racing builds lots of variations of the Jeep Straight 6 for off-roaders, mud boggers, and racers. This particular build is a budget stroker, but we're impressed with just how much power he's able to develop out of this mill without spending a ton of bucks. The recipe for a budget stroker build is to start with a 4 liter block and mate that with the crank and connecting rods from a Jeep 4.2 liter engine. The 4 liter block is critical because it allows for a larger bore. In this case, Newcomer has punched out the stock 3.875 inch diameter cylinder bores to 3.905 inches. Combined with a 3.895 inch stroke crank from the 4.2 liter engine, that makes for a total displacement of 280 cubic inches or if you're into that European stuff, 4.59 liters. This particular block is known as a 449 casting and it's out of a 99 Cherokee. The 449 is an NVH block, which you can see on the side of the casting. And that just means efforts have been made to reduce noise, vibration, and harshness. For us, however, the benefit is the NVH blocks came with a block main girdle and more webbing internally to help stiffen up the bottom end and handle additional horsepower. Remember, this is a budget-friendly build, so many of the parts used will be stock replacement level stuff. Here, Newcomer has measured and installed the new main bearings and applies a thick coat of assembly lube. As we mentioned earlier, this crank came out of an AMC 4.2 liter straight six, which is 258 cubic inches but it is important to note that this crank is the lightweight version found in 81 and up AMCs. Here's one of the heavyweight pre-81 cranks. Note that it is fully counterweighted between every journal. And now compare it to the newer lightweight factory crank, which has only four counterweights. We're talking 37 total pounds versus approximately 65. And that makes the newer crank the obvious better choice for almost every naturally aspirated build. The rotating assembly uses the same OEM connecting rods from a 4.2 liter engine. All 4.2 rods are 5.875 inches long, but they aren't all the same. The connecting rods from 71 through 81 engines are generally considered stronger. Those are the blocks with a 707 number in the casting code. 82 and up engines, those were with casting code 352, are lighter weight and not as strong, so they're to be avoided if possible. Newcomer has also upgraded these rods with high strength ARP through bolts. The pistons, meanwhile, are all new sealed power hyper eutectic castings. They are definitely better than the stock slugs, but still quite affordable. A small dish helps keep the compression ratio pump gas friendly, even with the added stroke. They're also outfitted with a 1.5, 1.5, three millimeter ring package. Running the valve train is a bullet racing cams bump stick. Newcomer has spent a lot of time and money testing different combinations to squeeze the most bang for the buck out of this combo, so we won't give away all of his cam specs. But we can tell you that the hydraulic flat tappet cam has over 210 degrees of duration for both the intakes and exhaust at 50 thousandths lift and just under 500 thousandths gross valve lift. The idea here is to maximize torque and build a healthy power band under the red line which Newcomer says to be safe should be right around 5,000 RPM. We aren't using the heaviest valve springs, so a healthy coat of assembly lube on the lobes is all that's needed, and the cam is ready to go into place. After the bullet camshaft, the crank is laid into the saddles. The main bearing sizes are the same between the 4.0 and the 4.2, and normally it isn't necessary to clearance a 4.0 block for the extra strokes, so the crank should just drop right in. 
The mains are torqued to 100 pound-feet with motor oil lubricating the threads. One area where Newcomer recommends splurging a little bit is with the timing chain. This is a double roller from Rollmaster. They feature billet gears and not only don't really stretch, but they also hold up much better to abuse and hardcore off-roading much better than a stock replacement unit wheel. After verifying the cam timing, Newcomer finishes dropping in the other five pistons and rods. The rod bolts are torqued to 28 pound feet. And with that, the short block is basically complete. Next up are the hydraulic flat tappet lifters. Again, with plenty of assembly lube to protect them during the first fire up. It can be tough to get the lifters all the way down into the block where they made up with the camshaft. So Newcomer uses a magnet to help get each into its proper lifter board. Stock replacement valve springs and retainers are used in the cylinder head. Newcomer says they're good if you're building a stroker with relatively low red line. To improve airflow, Newcomer has pocket ported this head and back cut the valves, but many more options are available. For example, he also has a cylinder head that's been completely worked over for a high horsepower turbo six cylinder build coming up. That's the ported head in the back and I asked Newcomer to explain the differences. This is like, this is an HO head, so it'd be like a 7120 casting number. This is a 0630, it'll be marked right in here. Um, basically this head started in 96, so this head would have been from like 91 to 95. This would have been 96, 7, 8, that's pretty much it. This head would have dowels that would locate it on the block, so the dowels would locate the head keep it from moving around but you can use this head you can use either head you want the dowel is simply just sit in the open area if you decide you want a 7120 on it um, but that head is about max ported about as big as you're going to get and we put a 205-55 LS valve 8 millimeter in that one and this has got a stock size valve which would be like a 191-150 uh, valve so as you can see, it is quite a bit bigger. So stock to stock, which is the higher flowing head? Which is the better stock head? These heads are actually about identical. Um, the next, the version before would be a Renix head before this one, uh -huh. and they were pretty much horrible. And it's maybe a slight upgrade from a 4.2 head. And then the head, next version up from this one would be like a high port exhaust. The intake space is the same, but the exhaust was raised and a lot smaller for emissions. Yes, this is going to be one of the next builds, and it's, as you can see, it's, it's big. As you can see, the port size difference. It's huge. Before you ported it, were they close? They were, they were pretty much identical. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But for our naturally aspirated stroker build, the cylinder head really doesn't need all that work. It's got a bowl blend, nice valve job, back cut the valves, and that's really about it for the head. And everything up top is um, stock. We're trying to go with uh, low, like a low spring rate, so you get a long life out of the cam, not a lot of wear. So we'll find out on the dyno if it likes it or not. If it doesn't like it, we'll have to up the spring rate. So. It doesn't float the valves or anything, but as long as we can turn it to the red line, which is 4,900, if we can turn it to five and it doesn't float the valves, I'm happy with it. <laughs> so the cylinder head drops into place with a standard composition gasket and the new head bolts are torqued to 100 pound feet in stages.
The push rods are 5 16 in diameter with a 9 600 inch length. Newcomer says if you're running a more aggressive camshaft with stronger springs, 3 8 inch diameter push rods may be necessary, but to get them to fit without rubbing, you have to slot the push rod holes in the cylinder head. Stock style rockers with a 1.6 to 1 ratio are used. Notice the straps used to help provide a little additional stabilization. So this block came originally with a thrust washer to control your end play. Newer blocks have a thrust, like a yep. thrust plate. The old ones have the, the cam button, spring-loaded cam button, and we just converted it. Uh, it. And you'll just hook a timing cover up. It'll use the cam button off the front to set your end play. Because a lot of times the cams aren't easy to get with a thrust, and those are easy to get for cores. So we just use that and convert it. Back on the bottom side of the engine, this is the stamped steel OEM main girdle that came with the MVH blocks. It may not look like the beefiest thing in the world, but every little bit helps, right? If you're running a stroker engine package, make sure to recheck the clearance between the big end of the connecting rods and the girdle as the rods swing past. You may need to add washers underneath the girdle to raise it up a little bit. A little silicone in the corners helps ensure there will be no annoying oil leaks and a quality one-piece oil pan gasket is dropped in place before the stock oil pan is bolted down. And now here we are at the dyno with our stroker engine nearly complete. An MSD ignition system provides the spark. The plug wires are obviously too long, but they're just a dyno set. These are actually a used set of NASCAR cup wires with ultra low resistance. Hey, here in North Carolina, that stuff is practically everywhere. Both the intake and the exhaust are on the same side of the cylinder head, and they actually share some of the same bolts for mounting, thanks to large washers that overlap both the intake and the exhaust flanges. Newcomer often fabricates headers for his custom high horsepower engines, but because we're working on a budget here, he says that these are some no-name eBay headers with a 3-inch collector. The intake manifold is a cast aluminum aftermarket piece that Newcomer has ported and modified to accept a Holly style 4150 carb. The customer will reuse his throttle body fuel injection system on this motor, but for our testing, we've bolted up a 950 CFM Holly double pumper. That's probably a bit too big for street use, but on the dyno, it'll do just fine. Newcomer has found that a one inch spacer between either the throttle body or carburetor and the intake manifold also helps improve power. So as you can see, we've added one here. And now we're ready to make some steam. pull to 5200 rpm before the valves began to float. So the stock valve springs actually did just a touch better than newcomer originally expected. Overall the stroker made excellent torque. It never dipped below 300 pound feet from the beginning of the pull at 3000 rpm all the way to 5200. Peak torque was 329 and a half at 4500. And for what many may consider a mild combo, it pumped out an amazing 304.4 horsepower at 5100 rpm. Considering that in stock form, the best the straight six could do was 190 horsepower, this pump gas stroker is going to be quite the beast. Newcomer says you can also get this power with the OEM EFI system, but of course we're not talking about the older Renix engine management systems. But it will require higher flowing 24 pound per hour injectors and a bigger fuel pump like a 225 Walbro. It isn't absolutely necessary, but retuning the ECM is also recommended. And of course we called this a budget build, so we need to get to the numbers. 
Newcomer says his bare long block like this goes for 3,500 bucks, which is quite a deal considering all the new parts and the fact that the block and the heads have been fully machined. Of course, this is being filmed in 2019. So if you're watching this video and it's 2025 or something, don't expect those numbers to be the same. The complete engine varies with options, but this one sold for right around 5,000. That includes internally balancing the rotating assembly, bowl blending, port of the intake, accessories, dyno time, and shipping. For all that torque and an additional 115 horsepower, I consider that an awfully good bang for your buck.